good. Chris Rufo is the man who first broke this story. He's a writer at City Journal. We're happy to have him on back tonight. Chris, thanks so much for coming on, and congratulations on the happy and good and the effect your reporting has had, which is, I think, good for America. Tell us the extent of this kind of poison in our armed services. I'll tell you, it's absolutely ubiquitous. Uh, critical race theory is something that emerged in academia, uh, has spread through the more soft science divisions of the federal government. Uh, but in the last 72 hours, I've had dozens of leaks from uh, service members talking about trainings and microaggressions, uh, trainings and toxic masculinity, uh, and other critical race theory essentials. And it's got to the point that the West Point Military Academy is now teaching cadets uh, with required reading a textbook called Critical Race Theory and Introduction as part of one of its leadership courses. Uh, this is no longer in the shadows. Uh, they are making this part of the core curriculum at our highest military institutions, uh, and they're doing it brazenly uh, and almost everywhere. The, the problem with doing this in the military, even more so than in corporate America or other branches of government, is that it is by definition a top-down authoritarian structure. It has to be in order to work. So you can't, as an enlisted soldier, a young officer even, say, I'm, I'm opting out, I, I don't want to participate. I mean, this is mandatory in the truest sense. Yeah, it is. And I think that the, the real problem is that when you're teaching our soldiers, these are people who should be uh, trained to use lethal force. Uh, these should be the warriors that defend our country. Uh, you're teaching them that they actually uh, suffer from toxic masculinity. Uh, you're trying to degrade their sense of identity, their sense of power, uh, their sense of force. Uh, this is something that will, in time, endanger the national security of the United States. And I think the real problem is that top military brass, uh, top people in the Defense Department uh, are too too cowardly to stand up to the critical race theorists. How are they going to stand up to the regime in China and America's tough adversaries all over the world? Well, they're, they're too weak to say the war in Afghanistan should come to a close. I mean, th these are people who really have something to answer for, in my opinion. But let me ask you, since you've been covering this, has anybody at the level of colonel or general that you know of complained about this and said, wait, this is not our core mission? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there is kind of rumbling and private conversations, but I'll tell you that the directives come absolutely from the top. Uh, they're coming from the top military brass, and people are frankly too afraid to speak out. They're too afraid to be uh, have racial epithets or, or, or criticisms thrown their way. Uh, and people are in a position of hiding. Uh, military officers have sent me uh, leaked information on condition of anonymity because they're worried about retaliation. Uh, so this is something that has very little buy-in at the rank and file uh, soldiers, at, at, at people in the academies. Uh, but this is something that is really emerging from the top down. And I think we have to get to the bottom of this uh, because you cannot have this kind of ideology uh, in, in control of our, the United States military. Yeah. Well, we'd love to have the Secretary of Defense, Mark Esper, a former defense contractor, on this show any time to explain himself. We hope he's brave enough to do that. Chris Rufo, thanks so much for your indispensable reporting on this. Thank you.